Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Colton and for today's video, I thought it would be fun to put together a project that we can do to kind of test out the colors and the look that you get out of the Kodak sensor that is in the Olympus E-Volt E300. So I thought this would be, dare I say, fun. And in order to achieve this, I grabbed a few pieces of different color construction paper as well as some gummy bears, which I thought would be great because these particular gummy bears I used to eat when I was a kid and they were one of my absolute favorite candy to get. So I thought there'd be a little bit of a history there that would be fun to play around with. And also maybe another benefit is a little snack at the end. So hopefully I'll be able to wait until the end to eat these gummy bears and not snack on them throughout the session. But yeah, I thought this would be a fun project to test out this camera. And so without further ado, let's jump over to the makeshift studio. So here is my little makeshift studio. I have a small white backdrop and I'm taking these small pieces of construction paper, placing them on here, and then grabbing some gummy bears to add onto the top of the paper. Um, I do have a constant power light, which I am using. Uh, that way we can get some good fill light, but also for the camera to be able to see and autofocus, need to have a good light in there. And then for the main light, I have a strobe, which I will lower once I'm ready to start shooting. And that will be the main light, so it will overpower the constant power light just enough to cast some shadow to the side but still have a fairly well-lit image where the shadows are not too overpowering. So right now I'm realizing I do not have enough green. Initially, green on green was what I was planning to do, so I quickly abandoned that idea. Probably should have got a bigger bag of gummies, but I pivoted and uh, started putting some red gummies on there, um, which, you know, Looked pretty cool for the contrast, even at the risk of looking like a Christmas uh, setup. And here you can see how I am arranging them onto the card. One thing worth noting is that because these are gummies, they are food and they're leaking oil onto the card. So as I'm placing them down, I'm realizing that they're leaving a print on the actual card itself. And that's a good call out. If you're working with food, always have, you know, enough food to work with, but also have enough, you know, cards, assuming that the food is going to, you know, sort of damage or mess things up. Pretty sure I snuck a gummy in there. Uh, probably was one that was really, really deformed or something. And so I ate that, couldn't even make it to the end of the shoot. And now with the gummies arranged, I'm putting the flash into position. And again, the flash should overpower this constant light just enough to cast a bit of a shadow, but not so much that we totally uh, overpower the constant light. And so now I have the Olympus E-Volt E300, and I'm taking some photos. Now, some of this will be me kind of fine-tuning the settings on both the camera and the flash. But also some of this is a little bit of fear as I begin to take these photos, realizing a number of things. One, I don't have enough gummies, but also two, the images I'm seeing on the camera's LCD screen are pretty horrendous. Um, it's immediately making me think that I was not prepared enough for this shoot and that all of the images are gonna look like garbage. I'm gonna have to scrap the entire video. So I am really working on dialing these settings in to try to get the shots that I'm looking for and also playing with kind of the position that I want to shoot these from. Luckily for me, I am using a macro lens. So I was able to get super, super close, which helped kind of hide how few gummies I actually had. And uh, here you can see the Gummy Goblin caught red-handed. Now in the previous shot, you probably saw the computer was turning on 
And that was because I decided I needed to check and see how the images were actually looking because they were so bad on the E300's pitiful LCD screen. Luckily, when I got them into Lightroom, I saw that they did actually look really good and they were coming out well. The one thing I noticed was that the gummies were way too close. So here I am um, kind of repositioning these gummies on the fresh side of the card and spacing them out a bit more which ended up really, really looking good once I got these all organized. So I'll set up all of these gummies um, with the ones I like the best towards kind of the middle slash front and the gummies that I like the least best uh, towards the sides and back. Uh, but again, if I were to do this in the future, I would buy a bigger bag of gummies. I don't know what I was thinking with just a small bag I should have got a big boy size. All right, so fast forward a bit. We've shot on a few different cards. Now we are trying out a red on red, which I'm anticipating to be the more challenging one to shoot. In my experience, shooting things that are red don't tend to show up as well on the end result picture. They seem to kind of lose some of their sharpness and definition. Um, I found that to be the case when shooting something that has a lot of red light in it. So I'm very curious to see how this turns out. And I'm hopeful that because the card is a lot lighter than the actual gummies, that they'll be able to have some sort of distinction between the two. Uh, whereas that didn't seem to be as much of a case with the um, yellows that I had just shot uh, a few minutes earlier but they actually turned out pretty well. Um, I had to do a little bit of post-processing, but I'm proud of what we got in the end. And here you can see just how close I was able to get with that macro lens. It's a 35 millimeter four thirds, so the equivalent is a 70 meter on a full frame. And so I'm able to get super, super close, which actually saved this shoot. If I had not had this macro lens, this would have been a disaster. So kudos to that lens. It is also a super, super sharp lens. And um, I was able to pick this one up for, I think, 55 bucks. So you can actually still get them for a pretty decent price. Here's a nice wide angle. You can kind of see relatively how close I was getting and um, went for a couple top down shots as well. Again, the space is a bit tight, um, but it actually ended up working for these kind of smaller still lifes where I didn't have to bust out the entire massive setup to shoot and uh, was able to do so a little bit more comfortably. So uh, now, even though I snacked on a bunch throughout the shoot, here's my little reward at the end. If we do this again, I'll probably get larger construction paper and also I'll probably get more gummy bears. There were not enough gummy bears. I thought there'd be so much more, but there were not enough it was very challenging to get the shot that I wanted to get without A, showing that the gummy bears sort of like end and there's not enough, and B, like shooting past the color paper onto the white backdrop that I had set up. So in the future, if we do anything like this again, bigger construction paper and a lot more gummy bears. But end result actually came out looking pretty good. So. These are some of the photos that we took with some photographic tweaks to them just to enhance the overall image, enhance what's already there. But I will have to say I was extremely pleasantly surprised with the uh, image results coming out of this camera. Being that it is an eight megapixel camera from 20 years ago, it still has some great power behind it. And honestly, this is a camera that could absolutely still be used today for all kinds of projects. So I was really impressed. And I will say as I was shooting, I was uh, a bit nervous because the LCD screen on that camera is garbage, but also it made all of these pictures look like I was totally missing the shots and they were like really bad shots. So um, I was glad when I put them into Lightroom and saw that they were actually decent and not as bad as the LCD screen made me think that they were. But anyway, I thought this was a fun project to kind of test that out. I would like to do some more projects like this, um, even beyond just for this particular camera, 
But if you have any suggestions of maybe still lifes or things that you might want me to shoot in more of like a studio setting with these older types of cameras, let me know in the comments below. I would love to generate some ideas from the community and put those into practice as best I can uh, for you all. So let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. For now though, I'm Colton and I'll see you in the next one.